So let's try to think about how could we implement a promise. So we have those two ideas where we have two primitives, sorry. One is called force, the other one is called delay. Um, and as you may wonder, uh, there's a very imperative nature here in the sense that you call a certain, you, you first of all, there's, uh, when you call delay, you are delaying an, an evaluation, and we can think of that. We could represent such a concept with a thunk, right? We could create, say, take something that takes, a, define a, func a promise as it's a thunk. Uh, but then, essentially, what we want to be able to control is how is force implemented, right? Uh, so such that so that we could uh, just um, constrain how and when, how many times and when. Um, this thunk given by parameter is evaluated or is is run so um you can think of a promise as something that has really just two states right it has uh, either a thunk that has not been run yet or um a thunk that has been run at least once so if we think about it then we need to a data structure to represent, let's say we want to represent a promise. So this promise would have to, this promise data structure would have to contain these two pieces of data, right? It has to say, it has to know what needs to be executed and what is the status of execution. It right? was run once or not. So let's try to define that. So we can define uh, with a struct. Let's call that a promise. Um, and what we want is, let's say that the, the promise body, and then we have, um, the promise status. Okay. So this is what we have. And basically we could define a function that let's call make promise and make promise takes a thunk, right? And what it does, it creates a promise data structure that has the thunk as the body and the status we're going to say that is not been run. Okay. Um, and now what we need to do is how do we, how do we implement a uh, force? right and if you think about it what force is doing is actually two things right first is checking whether or not the status what is the status of the promise right whether it was run or not and if it was run it should return the value and if it was not run it should uh, call the body the thunk that is stored there right so if it's two things then we need two operations so let's create those two operations one we'll call that, uh, what, what is it that we have called it? So let's call one uh, sync and the other one get. Okay, so what promise? So we'll do define promise sync. That takes a promise P and does something. And then we get promise get P that does something. Okay, so what do we do when, what, what do we mean by sync? Sync is this check that we 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 may run something right so let's let's separate sync from get where get is just returning the result of something that was already run okay and what we we kind of break down it's not what we kind of we break down force into two operations and again the underlying problem here is that we don't have mutable state. And what we've seen so far is when you don't have mutable state, what do you do when you want to alter a state? You have to create a new value, right? So in this case, we have this promise uh, and the status here is not run, right? So the status is false. Um, so we could even, instead of status, that status doesn't mean a lot. Why don't we call was this run, right? And instead of sync, maybe let's call this run. Oh no, let's call it sync. Sync is fine, sync is fine. Sync is a great name. 
Okay, so now what do we need to do? Now what we need to do is, uh, if the promise was run, then, so again, this is the field run question mark, which is the second field, which is initialized with false. So if it has not been run, then what we need to do is we need to create, we need to do something here, one, uh, needs to run. Otherwise, otherwise the promise has already run and we don't need to change its state. So if we don't need to change its state, we can return the promise as is. Okay, so let's do that. Um, but here, if the promise, uh, oh wait, if the promise has run, you return P, but if the promise has not returned, we need to do something. So what, what I want to do now is, I want to create a new, th a new promise where I want to call the promise body, right? And I want to store the results of that promise body in the field body. Okay, because that's, we are updating the body from the thunk to the result of computing the thunk, right? And now what we want to say is that the thunk has run. So we store true. Okay. So if I do make promise, define P, and now I do lambda something that does display hello world okay and doesn't return anything so i create a promise like this right and now what i do is i do promise sync and what that returns is a promise p okay actually let me return 10. okay so oh i want to say that this promise this structure is transparent okay so I want to print this P, then I want to do define P2, call this P1. I want to print out P1, and then I want to do a sync on P1, and then I want to print out P2. Okay, let's see what's what's going on here. Oh, I want to I want to comment this out because otherwise we're going to wait for three seconds. Comment this, comment that. Fix bugs. Mismatch. Promise body, of course, I need to pass the P. So here it's saying promise bo body error day mismatch. That means that I'm not giving, you know, I either have too many or too few uh, arguments. And of course, the promise body is the field of a promise. So I need to pass what promise is. Okay, so uh, there's uh, one more star here, something that is running. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's in a test. Okay, so if P1 is the prom a promise I created that has the thunk that I passed, in this case is this thunk right here, and then it has false because the thunk has never run. And then I do P2, and it's... Um, I execute it and I'm storing um, the same thunk. So that should not be it. So why am I storing? Why am I not storing 10? Okay. Okay, and then let me just move on and explain the final exercise and, and then I'll revise what, what went wrong. Okay, so then what should get do? Well, get should return the value, but only if it hasn't, uh, it, if it wasn't executed. So first thing I need to check is run. So I need to do a conditional. And if the promise has run, then I return its value. So I do promise body of p otherwise the promise has not run and i need to throw an error and complain run promise sync first okay so in order to call get you first need to have called promise sync first okay so this is still, there's something wrong here still. Let's see what's going on here. 
So, ah, yes, I know what's going on. Okay. So I want to call, I want to define the thunk to be the promise body. And then what I want to store in the promise bar in the promise is the res the result of calling the thunk. Okay, so what I want to you to note is that when I initialize when I, when the promise is initialized, right? It contains a thunk and a flag marked in false, right? And then I when I do sync, which is after I printed, I do a sync. When I do a sync, it is executed. I know that because Hello World was printed out in the screen. And then P2 contains the result of mutation, right? So after I the, the new promise that contains the result of the thunk, right? So in this case, 10, and the flag passed to true, right? The flag means the thunk has been executed. It no longer exists. Now I just have its value, okay? So now if I do a uh, promise get of P2, I should get 10. And if I do promise get of P1, I should get an error because P1 is not ready yet. Okay, see, the error is error, run promise sync first. Okay, and if I get promise sync of P1, now it should run hello world again. Why? Because P1 is the state before, and if I do a sync, I run it again. Right? Whereas T P2 is the result of doing a force. So now it's the value is already cached. And if I do any get in P2, I get the result simply. Okay. So here is the result of the whole thing. Um so in, in this version, I kind of flipped the, the result, the, the arguments of the data structure, but everything else is the same. Okay, so uh, now here is the example where we do a promise repeat. Just wanna show you that it does what it should be doing uh, with immutable promises. Actually, let me do, uh, display with an I. Promise repeat. Here I want to write make, make, make promise. n is greater or equals than zero, otherwise promise repeat, and then I do promise sync. What did I do here? Promise sync. Okay, seems like it's doing what it should be doing. So what does the repeat do? It calls a new sync and then where is it printing out the result? Let me see. So we call promise repeat of n minus one and then uh, we do promise sync of prom. Okay, here I do thunk of sleep three. Okay, this should work. What is the error? Oh, identify already. Okay, call it. got it. This is the immutable. I'm going to call this I promise. Yeah, I should have read the error before assuming it was wrong. Okay, I think everything else should be fine. Okay, I only saw one I instead of three uh, because this value is being cached exactly what I wanted. Okay, so this is how one way of implementing promises, uh, just using uh, immutable data structures. Of course, you have to break it down into two operations, uh, where sync is performing the mutation and get is accessing the result of force. 
Um, and that's it. I hope you had fun. Hope you have a good weekend. Um, and see you next week. Oops. <laughs>